Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. So great to have you along on the College Investor Audio Show today as we take a look at tax breaks for tuition and student loans. Let's get right to it. So you can qualify for tax breaks based on spending on college tuition and fees, textbooks, and student loan interest. Options include the American Opportunity Tax Credit, Lifetime Learning Tax Credit, Employer Paid Educational Assistance, Student Loan Interest Deduction, and the Tuition Gift Tax Exclusion. And there are also federal income tax advantages for saving for college through a 529 college savings plan, a Coverdell Education Savings Account, and the Education Savings Bond Program. And some states provide state income tax deductions or even credits based on contributions to 529 plans. First, let's take a look at the American Opportunity Tax Credit. So the AOTC provides a partially refundable tax credit based on amounts spent on tuition, fees, and course materials. Materials include required textbooks, supplies, and equipment. The AOTC is worth up to $2,500 per student, not bad, representing 100% of the first $2,000 in qualified expenses and 25% of the second $2,000. And it's partially refundable too, up to $1,000, provided that the student is claimed on the taxpayer's federal income tax return and cannot be claimed as an exemption on another taxpayer's federal income tax return. The AOTC is not subject to the Alternative Minimum Tax, or AMT. You can even claim the AOTC for up to four years of post-secondary education and, at most, four tax years per student. And it can be claimed based on expenses paid during the first three months of the next tax year in addition to the current tax year. Let's move on to the Lifetime Learning Tax Credit. So this credit, called the LLTC, provides a non-refundable tax credit worth up to $2,000 per taxpayer based on 20% of the first 10 k in tuition, fees, and required textbook supplies and equipment. Note that the tax credit is per taxpayer, not per student. The LLTC can be claimed for an unlimited number of years. Now let's move on to qualified scholarships. Scholarships that are used to pay for tuition, fees, Course-related materials like books and equipment are tax-free if the student is degree-seeking and the scholarship is not provided as a fee for services. Amounts used to pay for living expenses like transportation, room and board, that's all taxable, and the student must report the taxable portion of their scholarships on their federal income tax return. There's no income phase-out either on the exclusion from income for qualified scholarships. Employer Paid Education Assistance. Okay, so up to $5,250 in employer paid educational assistance may be excluded from a taxpayer's income. That's nice. Qualified expenses, of course, tuition, fees, books, supplies, equipment, as well as student loan repayment. The student does not need to be degree seeking either. Eligible courses can include undergrad, grad, continuing education courses and employer-provided courses as well. The courses must be taken by the employee, not the spouse or dependents. Okay, now let's take a look at the student loan interest deduction. This could always be kind of tricky. So the student loan interest deduction is an above-the-line exclusion from income for up to $2,500 in interest paid on all federal and most private student loans. The student loan interest deduction can be claimed even if the taxpayer does not itemize deductions on their federal income tax return. The student loan interest deduction phases out at seventy grand to eighty-five thousand dollars for single, and one hundred forty-five to one hundred seventy-five thousand for married taxpayers who file jointly. Taxpayers who file tax returns as married filing separately are ineligible. These income phaseouts are for twenty twenty-two and are adjusted annually for inflation. Tuition Gift Tax Exclusion So under Section 2503E of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, tuition paid directly to an educational institution is exempt from gift taxes. So this tax break is limited to tuition only, though. 
Other college costs like fees, room and board, transportation, those are not eligible. This is, you know, rarely necessary since the annual gift tax exclusion is usually sufficient. The gift tax exclusion is $16,000 per giver per recipient in 2022. So a married couple can give up to thirty-two grand annually to each grandchild to cover college costs or for any other purpose. Contributions can be made up to five times the annual gift tax exclusion amount using a 529 plan through five-year gift tax averaging. And we do go into gift tax averaging and those types of things. If you check out thecollegeinvestor.com, we also have a podcast about it as well in the archives. And that leads us to our next topic, which is college savings plans. So contributions to savings plans like 529s, prepaid tuition plans, and even a Coverdell education savings account are made with after-tax dollars. Earnings accumulate on a tax-deferred basis and are entirely tax-free when used to pay for qualified educational expenses. Now, qualified higher educational expenses include tuition, fees, books, supplies, equipment, special needs expenses. Room and board is a qualified expense if the student is enrolled on at least a half-time basis. Transportation is not a qualified expense. Up to ten grand in student loan repayment is considered a qualified expense for 529s. This is a lifetime limit for the borrower. The beneficiary and the beneficiary's siblings are each eligible for up to ten k in student loan repayment. There is no annual contribution limit on 529 plans other than gift tax exclusion limits. However, 529 plans allow five-year gift tax exclusions, also known as super funding, which allows lump sum contributions greater than the annual gift tax exclusion to be treated as occurring over a five-year period. Each state has its own contribution limit, of course, which ranges from $235,000 to 542,000 and there is there are no income phase outs on 529 plans. But if we're talking about Coverdell education savings accounts, they are limited to $2,000 per year from all sources through age 18. There is an income phase out on contributions to a Coverdell education savings account based on the income of the contributor. You can see those at thecollegeinvestor.com. Now let's talk about student loan forgiveness. We love that topic. You can see tons about it, by the way, at thecollegeinvestor.com and also in the archives. We have lots and lots of podcasts devoted to student loan forgiveness. Now these are tax-free through December 31st, 2025. This exclusion from income is likely to be extended or made permanent. We'll see. If the tax-free status is not extended or made permanent, Public service loan forgiveness will remain tax-free, as will loan forgiveness from closed school discharges, false certification discharges, unpaid refund discharges, and loan forgiveness under the Public Health Service Act. However, other types of student loan cancellation, such as the death and disability discharges, and the forgiveness that occurs after 20 or 25 years of payments in an income-driven repayment plan, will once again be taxable. Coordination restrictions. So the IRS does not allow double dipping. Darn. Coordination restrictions prevent taxpayers from claiming two tax breaks based on the same qualified expense. Each dollar of qualified expenses can be used to claim only one tax break. Okay, so if you want to find out more, the IRS publication 970 is where to go. It's typically updated in January or February, and you can see a link to that in this article at thecollegeinvestor.com. Just copy and paste the title of this podcast in the search bar, and you'll find it. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I hope it was helpful. I know we crammed a ton of information in here in about 10 minutes, and that can be kind of confusing. Please see the article, thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again. We'll talk to you again real soon.